Good night. I'm trapped in the storm. How did I get here? And where is here? Wait, there's the lighthouse. I'll be safe if I can make it there. I hope. Please let me make it there. That was so Alfred surreal. Famously called film, Little Pieces of Time. But he could be talking about photography, as he likely was. Okay, I'm These in class. Everything's cool. I am okay. From light to shadow. From color to chiaroscuro. Now, can you give me an example of a photographer who perfectly captured the human condition in black I didn't and white? fall asleep, and that Anybody? sure didn't feel like a dream. Bueller. Weird. Diane Arbus. <laughs> there you go, Victoria. Why Arbus? Look at this crap. How can I show this to Mr. Jefferson? I can hear the class laughing at me now. Because of her, of her images of hopeless faces, you feel like totally haunted by the eyes I of I can't believe I still have this. I should take a picture to prove She's I'm still here. Tortured, right? Plus, and I have to get my day. I can't tortured. believe I still have this pencil case. I should upgrade to the 21st century. Seriously, though, but I, I like it old school. In a dark corner and capture you in a moment of desperation. I do love and my analog camera. That to me. I should take a quick picture now. Isn't that too easy? Too obvious? What if Arbus chose to capture people at the height? I haven't kept up with my journal as much as I should. She had a brilliant eye. If anybody else looked at this, what would they think? So, she could have taken another approach. I have to admit, I'm not a big fan of her work. I prefer Robert Frank. Me too, Victoria. He captured the essence of post-war beat America, and there was honesty about the economic conditions of the era, but a beauty in the struggle. You don't have beauty without a beat, which explains why Frank was Kerouac's photographic muse, and both were the great chroniclers of the 1950s. Well, we've all seen that I can't... Look at this crap. Shot of How can I show this to Mr. Jefferson? You shame, shame. I can hear the class Action laughing at me now. Urban solitude of the 20th century poet. You dig? Now, 
contrasts Frank's stark Americana with Salvador Dali's surrealist photographs. Like Cocteau, he was a true Renaissance man. And his famous self-portraits are famous early examples of that truly awful word you pesky kids love so much. The selfie. And it's a great tradition, and I wholeheartedly fight for your right to self-expression. Or selfie expression. <laughs> Sorry. I know. So if anybody wants to question the portrait as modern narcissism, they could go back hundreds of years to blame society. Speaking of questions, I bet you thought I'd talk all the way until the bell rang. It's your turn to lecture us. Now, based on the chapters, I have no doubt you all memorized, who can tell me the name of the actual process that led to the birth of the self-portrait? I believe Max has taken what you kids call a selfie. A dumb word for a wonderful photographic tradition. And Max has a gift. Of course, as you all know, the photo portrait has been popular since the early 1800s. Your generation was not the first to use images for selfie expression. Sorry, I couldn't resist. The point remains that the portraiture has always been a vital aspect of art and photography for as long as it's been around. Now, Max, since you've captured our interest and clearly want to join the conversation, can you please tell us the name of the process that gave birth to the first self-portraits? You're asking me? L let me think. Um... You either know this or not, Max. Is there anybody here who knows their stuff? Louis Daguerre was a French painter who created daguerreotypes, a process that gave portraits a sharp reflective style like a mirror. Now you're totally stuck in the retro zone. Sad face. Very good, Victoria. The Daguerrean process brought out fine detail in people's faces, making them extremely popular from the 1800s onward. The first American daguerreotype self-portrait was done by Robert Cornelius. You can find out all about him in your textbook or even online. And guys, don't forget the deadline to submit a photo in the Everyday Heroes contest. I'll fly out with the winner to San Francisco where you'll be feted by the art world. It's great exposure and it can kickstart a career in photography. So Stella and Alyssa, get it together. Taylor, don't hide. I'm still waiting for your entry too. And yes, Max, I see you pretending not to see me. Victoria doesn't waste a second kissing ass. Even her school books are gift wrapped. I can't believe she made fun of me in class. What is she, 15 years old? I should have known. She'll have better equipment than Blackwell. is an important cultural event, and I want to represent Blackwell Academy. You have just by participating, by putting yourself out there in the world. Now, no matter who wins, 